Coming up next on Yo TV, we have part two of Alan Martinez's Beat Diary. We also talked to Literacy for Environmental Justice about PG&E here in Hunters Point. We got music from The Quick and the Dead for you, and we got some footage from all the events we went to. Like, uh, Every single one? Yeah, like footage from the D. Young Museum and the yeah. Gaming Expo and right. more. Check it out. We are hanging out in Hunter's Point. It's uh, pretty toxic over here, and it's all because of, well, partly because of that back there. Go ahead, tell them what's that. Uh, this is the pg &E power plant. There's been a lot of disputes about it being here in the neighborhood, especially contributing to a lot of other negative environmental factors. Organizing groups like Literacy for Environmental Justice have been trying to get them out of here for a while. So we spoke to them. We also talked to James Ryan kind of coming from the other direction, pg &E, about really actually getting the plant out of here, so we try to get both perspectives. But this is the toxic tour, and this is the first stop. So this is a map of Baby Hunter's Point, and what it shows, all the colored dots, um, square signs, and rectangles that you see, those are all showing um, the hazardous sites in Baby. So as you can see, there are about 325 sites here, and there's not a whole lot that's so what this shows is that people are living literally right next to, right across the street from, right behind, right on top of you know, things like hazardous waste generator, generators, under, underground storage tank, hazmat register sites, um, acutely hazardous sites, and hazardous waste treatment sites. I know quite a few folks who have asthma, um, a lot of young kids, and actually I've noticed myself just from um, working here, you know, I was perfectly fine now, I have been healing. I've had a lot of contact with people who have, who have asthma or they're living with babies, and most of my friends um, are from around this area, grew up in this area. Asthma has come on, they just take a lot of exposure to their baby, and they take a lot of cancer, and they take a lot of cancer, and those are the two main things that we have. My name is Susie Stay by the factory over there from Third, and she died because she had asthma. Just a few years ago, a little boy actually died. He was having an asthma attack in one of the child development centers, and he was in the bathroom, and the teacher didn't get to get time, didn't realize how serious he was, and he actually died of an asthma attack. He was five or six. The range of health effects really varies from just a cough or a rash to asthma, which can, you know, it can be fatal. There are a lot of um, skin conditions, a lot of rash conditions, also. Um, People when they're exposed to, you know, air that's toxic, headache, you know, these are kind of transient acid things. Things that are more kind of long term could be cancer and you know, things that affect how your brain develops, so lead, a lot of lead issues, um, and a lot of houses, um, you know, PCBs, which are in the water, which are in the fish, which are in the fish, which are in the that can affect your brain development and you know, you know, that actually is a cancer. The other thing to notice about the map is that it's bounded by two freeways, so um, 280 and 101, kind of around both sides of Bayview, and so a lot of the air pollution um, actually comes from traffic. So cars, you know, with big trucks. Um, so th there are a lot of things that impact this weakness. There's not just one culprit. And we get different responses from different people, right? So the, the Navy, you know, they, they're they cleaning up the shipyard. That's, that's what they'll tell you. Um, now, the cleanup, you know, they, they get other issues, you know, they have all these trucks coming by, which is a lot of diesel fuel, there might be spills off the back of the trucks, you know, onto the road, um, but, you know, for the most part, they're, they're trying to listen to the community, they have meetings with some of the community and um, Navy members, and you can talk and, you know, answer your questions. The power plant folks are a little bit harder to get a hold of. Every organization, every business doesn't have to get involved in pg e got together with the April Institute. Also, pg e got together with the Pro 
oppose a coalition. This is over 800 residents and organizations within the baby boomers. For years and years, you know, when we tried to talk to them and get them to shut down the power plant, they said, oh, we'll do it next year. And then next year came, and said, oh, we'll do it next year. What is happening now is never happened, which is there is nine points of completion. Seven of them have been completed. This document here is a document that verifies what has been done and what is needed to be done. We anticipate we will actually celebrate the closure of the first PGA plan later in April. I think it gets very simple. Anyway, there's so much, you know, so many things going on in the world. And I think just educating other people is the first thing. So people who live in the middle of the world who don't realize that this is a big issue, talking to them and educating them is, you know, really the first step. And then taking that a level higher and going to the policy makers, going to the, the people who run the industries, you know, the people who are running the power plant, who are running the shipyard, working to get legislators to um, come up with policy solutions to say that we Schools shouldn't be half of the time for We shouldn't have a part break next to the school. You know, that all contributes to making it a healthier place for kids and adults. What's up, everybody? We're here at the basketball courts at the end of Kirkwood. Hope you liked the last clip. Kind of continuing with the theme of environmental justice and environmental issues here in Hunters Point. Took you to the top of the hill where, you know, on one side you have housing where a lot of people are raising families and on the other side is the Naval Shipyard, a super fun site with thousands of pollutants, you know, latent nuclear material, and the train tracks are here, and even, I guess, the police are training there. In that big building way over there, they practice. So you kind of get to see where a neighborhood rubs up against, you know, toxic chemicals and kind of this forgotten, abandoned area that's affecting people's health. So let's continue with the tour. We'll cut to a commercial when we get back. We'll have more for you. We have a continuing beat diary. We are talking to Alan. He tells you how it's important to have patience when coming out of this crazy lifestyle that he was living. Um, he's working with the beat, so I mean, he's typing up stories and going, I don't know what he does there. What does he do? He's working with youngsters, goes into juvenile hall, does there a writing go. workshop. He does the translation. People who write in Spanish, he translates oh, in Spanish to English. He's the dude. We love Alan. I see, I walk around my hood and I see a lot of people drunk and, you know, sleeping on the floor and, and a lot of guys like my age, they're over there on every Friday drinking and, and smoking and well, what about the next day? They're broke, they don't have a car, they don't, have, they don't go to school, they have a, a shady job, you know, they don't have anything. So, so my motivation, I think, is, uh, is just wanting to be somebody. In my family, nobody, uh, nobody has gone that far yet. My little brother is going, is going that way, but he, they haven't. My other brothers, I have like four more brothers, and they, they haven't got that far. So, you, so you yeah, I don't. My mom, my mom doesn't pay. My, my mom never paid. My, my parents never paid for anything for for my school, for for my education. They know I'm doing something, but I don't. It's like me. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't let them know. But I, I let. I let, my, I let my mother know who I'm really close to. But uh, they don't really. They don't really understand. They wouldn't understand if I tell them. Yeah, about these things. But they know I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm going. Good. They. They know I'm going. I'm going the good direction, and, and that I'm gonna get something. It's been taking me a long time being in being at City College because you know because of my my exchange thing. But uh, but uh, I'll get there. Well, I'm about to graduate from uh, from City College. Well, I would have I would have graduated a long time ago, but the fr I, I decided at the beginning I decided to be a mechanic because my dad is a mechanic. So I took I spent like four semester over there taking all of, all, of, all of the other mechanics uh, uh, classes, took them all. But then I realized that it, that wasn't me. I wanted to do something else, so I went back. I went back to school, and now I want to do something else. I've been working for the beat for about six years, something. Since I've been working for the beat for a long time, and, and I've been doing translations, I want to become a, either an interpreter or a translator. Like, I took Spanish classes, I'm really good in Spanish, and I'm working, I'm working with my English, but uh, it's getting better, and, and, and I like translation. In order to get a job, man, in order to succeed, you gotta be patient. You gotta be patient, and you have to. You, you want, 
you want to show people you're gonna you're gonna get some somewhere because I remember when I came to the beat they would pay me six six to seven dollars an hour you know what I mean and started doing started doing the basic stuff typing and uh, typing and sometimes doing the mailing but throughout the throughout the years and throughout the time and all this stuff you know what I mean some guy there was this guy who was doing the translations at that time, but he left, he, um, he quit and then he left. Then he gave me the opportunity to, be, to take his place, you know. From there, I started going to workshops, I started doing this and that, so I made it. I, I, liked, I, liked doing, I liked going back to Juvenile Hall, doing, uh, conducting these programs, these workshops, talk to, talking to kids one-on-one, -on -one, talking to them, giving, giving them advice. And I like, I like the things I do too. I like the translation part. You know, I, it's gonna help me, it is helping me, and it's going to be helping me in the future. This is the first step in cleaning up after ourselves, picking up your motor oil when you're doing it, you know, cleaning up the environment. And, you know, check us out on www.youthoutlook.org to learn more about all our segments. Yo, went to a lot of events this past month. Um, we put on our own fashion show over at 2232 MLK in Oakland. Swan actually hooked it up. We had Panama there. It was his birthday. He just turned 18. Panama, he's <laughs> on the market. <laughs> so go ahead and check that out first. <laughs> So we were hanging out at the newly renovated D. Young Museum and it was pretty cool, so check it out. This, it's, it's this art that's not your grandmother's art, basically. It's art that we can relate to. It's art that we could do ourselves in many senses. Is anyone here uh, who, who can remember the old De Young when it stood in this location? <laughs> <laughs> I see only people over, over 20, let's say. <laughs> the actual building went up in about five years. The project was $202 million. The money was raised by community members. We wanted to do a few things that were different from what the old museum looked like. We didn't want to just reproduce the old museum or replicate it. Uh, we wanted to do something that was of the 21st century rather than something that was of the 19th century. Unlike the old De Young, the old De Young was sort of this fortress and you'd walk in and there were no windows and it was old art and there were period rooms and it was sort of boring. And so the new De Young is exactly not that. The new De Young is exciting and it's copper clad and it's the largest copper clad building in the entire world. And we have double the exhibit space from the old De Young, which means we have a ton of contemporary art, which means we're getting a lot of younger people into the museum. The $202 million project is so successful partially because it enabled us to open this museum up, make a third of it free to the public, which is why I think a lot more younger people are coming. And it's art that someone's not telling you, by the way, you should be intimidated by this piece of art because you should know why it was made. Well, it was made because the artist wanted to make it. Maybe a political motivation, maybe not. Maybe they just really liked the images. And that's what the De Young's sort of about, is trying to make these connections between 
what we think and why art's created and not all about the academia of art and you've got to study this art to be able to understand it. No, actually you just have to like check it out. We also went to the games convention in San Francisco at Moscone Center um, and did your thoughts there and talked to people about games, what's coming out, etc. It was a place to be, so this is it. Check it out. I'm Aaron Glinski from Detroit, Michigan. My name is Jamil from Oakland, 19. I'm Kate, I'm 20, I'm from San Francisco. I'm Osiris Walls, I'm 14, and I'm from San Francisco. My name is Anthony, I'm from Oakland, I'm 22. I'm Diego, I'm 21, I'm from Colombia. So I just see Heck of Blood on this PSP, the handheld one, the cool one. Um, what are you playing right now? How do you like it? I'm playing Infected. It's a game about zombies that come around and try to attack people. So you have to shoot them. Gangsta! We are here hanging out with this gigantic old school Nintendo. And we are here with some fellas who just got free t-shirts. Um, what is in your bag right now? Oh um, my god. A t-shirt, even though it's a little too small. <laughs> Matrix video game. Why'd you guys come actually? Because we love video games. What do you like about this expo so far? It's great. Get to play a lot of games that haven't came out yet. Free stuff. Who don't like free stuff? I love Call of Duty, that's a really good game. What is it, what, what system do you play it on? It's a, it's like a military game, you play it on Xbox 360. Have you played the Xbox 360 at all? Yeah. Tell me about the Xbox It has really nice graphics and really good handling. We are in a very heated game right now, and, and Lizzie won. See, I was losing, Lizzie won. I like the Xbox 360, it's an all right system. It's pretty good. Would you pay $1,000 for it? No. He's kicking your butt. How do you feel? <laughs> He's just laughing. He is on the ground. All right, I bet you didn't know that it could be true, but Christians do make punk music. Up next, we have the Quick and the Dead for you, so go ahead and check it out. Hey, this is Cole Kalka. We're outside of the Quick and the Dead show. What I want to do tonight is give you an opportunity to see what one of the most popular bands in the Christian punk scene in the East Bay look like on stage and off. Let's go check it out. Describe to me a little bit where the name came from and a little bit of the style. Uh, the name came from a uh, Bible verse actually. It says God will come back to judge the quick and the dead, which just translated means living in the dead, which pretty much just means sinners, which is what we feel we are. We went a long time, you know, being in a band when we were on stage and, and we were kind of like, you know, portraying ourselves as happy-go-lucky great Christians with nothing wrong in our lives. And that just wasn't how it is. And, and we just woke up and we're like, you know, we're all sinners. We all make mistakes. That's what this band does. So, um, that's it. The style, style I'd have to say is a mix of a old AFI and new Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> Our message is pretty simple. It's you know we're we're all Christians. We all go to church. We're all about God, um, and it's just that and have some fun while you're hanging out with Joe. We don't take ourselves too serious. We're all about just having fun and goofing off. And, oh, we know, just sabotage Believe's trailer. Yeah. So Believe is this metal band that we're on tour with right now. They're a whole go, bunch go, of macho go. guys, and we just put Princess on the bumpers. <laughs> like, Now there's some pressure of being a Christian band because people expect you to be perfect, but is there ever that pressure of you're not hard enough, you're not punk enough? Well, yeah, actually, uh, a funny story when I first joined the band, 
Uh, we went to the mall and passed out CDs because we're cool like that. And uh, there's this kid who comes to every show ever and we're passing out CDs. We're like, hey, you wanna? I walked up to him and I was like, hey, you want a free CD? And he was like, yeah, who is it? I'm like, Quick of the Dead. And he's like, Quick of the Dead. They suck. And Carrie's like, I'm in that band. He's like, I'm sorry. And walked away. I don't know. It's cool. Some people like us, some people don't. It's all good. Goes after saying they suck and sing our, sing our songs. <laughs> He comes and sings the songs now. It's the end of the show, and we are ending it here at Hunters Point Youth Park. It's pretty festive. They have nets on their basketball courts and Christmas lights on their signs. Lizzie, thank you for VJing with us. It was fun. Thanks, girl. Was great. <laughs> Hopefully, we taught you a lot. If you want, go ahead and check out the rest of our footage at youthoutlook.org and email us at yotv at youthoutlook.org. I think that's what I just spelled out right now. Right? Oh, like that. Like oh. my finger was on fire. You Air words. I get it. I get it. <laughs> All right. Next time. Like I bet you don't know what to say now because I'm messing up. Let's do it again. <laughs> Every time. He always wants to eat me for yeah. camera. These are the four P9 Rogged Pelicans of the PG&E Power Plant. <laughs> I should drink some of this water here, man. Give me like superpowers. <laughs> run around knocking over power plants. <laughs> are you recording, man? All right, cool.